Okay, today was another one of those demotivating temperature type days. <laughs> um, to the point where the fan, the only reason why I have that idiot plugged in is so that it could cool down the temperature over here and kind of wake me up a little bit more and get me going. Um, today it was actually just blowing hot air at me. So that was unexpectedly unfortunate. So, um, I thought that instead of trying to, you know, get myself revved up and motivated to do something like new and try to tackle something, um, I thought that I would go back into my tool bag and see what have I not familiarized myself with? What have I, what haven't I used in a very long time? Or, um, what do I just, you know, ignore <laughs> for a little while? So that is why we are in... Substance Painter! <laughs> and um, just for future reference, mostly to future Tyler out there, um, what's behind my face is just more of the color, not color swatches, the uh, material swatches. So, and that panel doesn't really change, so now that we know what's behind my head, um, let me show what I have learned today! <laughs> Because um, it seemed really stupid, but it was like so basic that I was like, okay, well, I need to learn how to do this. Otherwise, it's I'm never going to use this program. <laughs> All right. So um, everything before this, though, was basically a review. So how to import your whatever you're going to work on. And I thought you would have to go into like this whole file import thing, but it's a lot easier than that just find your uh, your subject and I think it has to be an FBX OBJ STL like the 3d printing format but um, yeah so I have an FBX and it's very familiar by now um, there's a lot of videos out there that say that you know it's probably a good idea to bump up this resolution but I don't know if that really matters at all um, I'm gonna do it for this time but I think normally I'd leave it at a thousand, if not lower it, if anything. <sighs> oh, this canvas is larger. I think that's what the difference is. So we have the emotes, which is basically the main face plate. And then we have like a minor face plate. And then we have the normal textures. I forget what this thing is, but that's kind of half of the fun of what I was kind of messing around with today. So. The main focus that I was in is in this small little panel over here. <laughs> um, so I generally just started it off by like, okay, well, let's add some color. So what I learned today was how to properly do like, um, not properly, but like how to kind of do like a quick, quick and cheap color, color job. So I have, I chose fill layer and if we go into the properties here, we can actually change what that fill layer color is. So let's choose like a nice calming color, nice cool color to lower the temperature mentally. And then I want to put something on top of that, but let me see if I can recreate my problem. My problem was that, you know what, this, this model doesn't have the same problem of the model that I was working on before, because the other problem was an issue with, like, it was an eyebrow on top of the head. So just like how multiple parts of this robot are kind of um, spread out, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, um, how they're spread out along here so that you can actually, like, isolate a section of it and then color that in and not affect the rest of it. So the eyebrow, let's say, was like this section right here. And then the face was like this shield thing here. So if I wanted to color it in just to make the eyebrow a different color, um, it would bleed onto the face over here, even though I'm nowhere near that, that piece. And so I was like, I need to figure out how to do it more calculated more surgically <laughs> surgical coloring um 
Because if I just try to add another fill layer and just be like, okay, well, maybe I could just fill in just the eyebrow, um, it would just override, you know, the entire color. And that's not, that's not great. Um, I tried, I tried the paint layer, but like I said, if I tried to paint over this, see how it kind of bleeds into the, to the square up here, even though I'm nowhere near it, it even does it up here a little bit. So to get more, um, to get more control over that, let me see. I did a paint layer and I was like, this seems counterintuitive. And then I added a, a white mask, I believe. And then, no, it had to have been a, I think it was a black mask. Yeah, there we go. And then I added a paint. So I, it's at this stage, I think, that I would, yeah, I would mess with the color. So if I wanted it to be more metallic in nature, then I would do something like that and lower the roughness. And now it's got a nice sheen. But this just kind of shows whatever's behind it. And then in order to bring out the color that we just created out into the front, I would make a paint and then from the paint, I would go over here and select polygon fill. And then I can select just this section and it affects no other section to my knowledge. Look at that, huh? And that is what I learned today. <laughs> so I can do this. This, this one section's a little weird, and this is the first time that I'm actually running into this problem on this model specifically. I didn't have this on the, on the last project that I was working on, but I don't know why this singular section shares so many different segments. But anyways, everything up until then, um, that's it. That's what I learned today. I'm really proud of that. It's really simple. Veteran substance painter people are going to be laughing at this or just going, huh. But, um, yeah, that was, that was a roadblock that I hit, and I knew that I had to get past it in order to further my substance painter knowledge. This fan is still blowing hot air at me.